Joining us now is Major General Gregory Lusk. Welcome back to North Carolina Now. Well, thank you very much, sir. It's a, it's a pleasure to be with you today, especially as we commemorate the North Carolina Heritage Month. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the North Carolina National Guard. Mm -hmm. Give us a little background about the history and heritage mm -hmm. of this great unit. Well, thank you very much. We were, uh, we were honored uh, earlier this month to have had Governor McCrory come by our Joint Forces headquarters, and he signed a proclamation uh, proclaiming that March was North Carolina National Guard Heritage Month. And, of course, that was a very fitting uh, proclamation, I think, because just on March 17th, just the other day on St. Patrick's Day, our Air National Guard commemorated its 66th anniversary since its uh, initial formation. And then on March 24th of this month, we will celebrate the 351st uh, birthday of the North Carolina National Guard. Congratulations on that. Thank you. And of course, you had mentioned earlier that you oversee about 12,000 uh, soldiers. Mm -hmm. How does the National Guard differ or similar to perhaps other branches of the military, you know, Army, mm -hmm. Navy, Air Force, Marines? Mm -hmm. the, uh, both the Army National Guard and the Air National Guard uh, of, of the North Carolina National Guard, we're a joint force. We have components of both. Uh, same exact standards when it comes to performing f uh, federal wartime missions in terms of being able to demonstrate proficiency or perhaps even being assigned a mission and actually have to prosecute those, you know, in, in a wartime uh, setting. Uh, perhaps the difference in is that we, to the best of my knowledge, are the, uh, the only military service, uh, I think around the globe actually, we'll have to check on that to be sure, but I'm pretty sure, around the globe that has a dual mission mandate. So while we have a federal, what we call Title 10, uh, warfighting uh, mission. We also have a Title 32 domestic support operation mission. And in that case, uh, we serve underneath the governor of our respective states, who is indeed our commander in chief. And that's the way we operate most of the time, unless we are indeed called up for federal service or deployment overseas. Now, you've talked about uh, missions, but some of them you probably can't discuss. But mm -hmm. what are some of the perhaps situations that the Guard may be participating in um, as it becomes, uh, well, in relationship to, to serving. Perhaps most people in North Carolina, as being a hurricane-prone mm -hmm. state, uh, are probably used to seeing uh, many National Guardsmen and women responding to those disasters. Uh, we've had the height of those probably back in Hurricane Floyd, where we had nearly 6,000 of those 12,000 were on duty at that time. That was quite a storm. And we've had other instances throughout the state to include the most recent uh, winter storm where we had nearly 200 that were on duty then. So that kind of covers our state active duty part. Um, we had almost 600, for example, in support of uh, Charlotte Mecklenburg Police and other agencies in support of the Democratic National Convention in Charlotte. So a lot of it behind the scenes, but no less uh, just as important missions that many times we do inside of our homeland. Now. Internationally, of course, in you know 9/11, I think absolutely changed the face of the National Guard for for quite a long time. Uh, we have experienced probably the uh, the most prolific uh, number of deployments and mobilizations of National Guardsmen, definitely since World War II, uh, with nearly 22,000 of our so citizen soldiers and airmen having deployed. Mm -hmm. And and you talk about being citizen soldiers. Mm -hmm. How important is that, especially being a citizen soldier, but then you also have an employer that you also have to answer to? What type of adjustments have been made for, for that? Mm -hmm. That is a unique challenge. Um, so on one hand, uh, a member serving in the North Carolina National Guard, and it also kind of goes back to your first question, I think, too, one of the, some of the uniquenesses about uh, being a National Guardsman, is that we have the, uh, we have the civilian skill sets and those uh, out there that we've that we've garnered throughout our, our entire life work experience, that combines with our military training to make us very very effective. And I could give you countless examples of how that came into play while deployed overseas into Iraq. Um, but there's no doubt about it that it takes a great deal of commitment, selfless service, and um, and dedication to wear the uniform. But equally, it takes just as just as much dedication and heroism and selflessness for the families and the employers that support their citizen soldiers and airmen. And you've talked about many mm -hmm. of the accomplishments that you've made, but are there any in particular that you're really proud of? 
The 6,000 uh, that we had on duty following Hurricane Floyd is, is one very memorable occasion, and particularly in the northeastern part of the state that, uh, that I had the opportunity to personally participate in, witnessing uh, men and women in the National Guard going and pulling uh, neighbors out of their houses and taking them to rescue, I mean, to safety because the floodwaters were rising. You know, the numerous helicopters that flew and extracted people from rooftops or other places like that. Again, a very memorable and yet rewarding. Now, if I look at the, uh, at the national security operations, uh, there are a bunch of noticeable, uh, notable events that have occurred over these last 12 years. Our heaviest, largest formation is the 30th Armored Brigade Combat Team. They're the only National Guard unit, to my knowledge, that has served twice in Iraq being assigned battle space to manage. Our 1452nd Transportation Company uh, in the western part of the state was on the last convoy that came out of Iraq. Um, our 145th Airlift Wing over in Charlotte, for example, also were amongst the first aeromedical evacuation squadrons to deploy to Afghanistan, and they also did some of the first precision-guided resupply drops in these very remote combat outposts throughout Afghanistan. So. And as you look towards the future, what do you see the role of the North Carolina National Guard, especially in, in its mission and, and its efforts, say, in the state and perhaps worldwide? Well, I think that one thing that we strive to do, and we all have a commitment uh, in our organization that, that we have to add value to our community. It's, it's kind of unspoken, but it's understood. Our Tar Heel Challenge Academy is, uh, is one such example where we provide an educational opportunity for at-risk high school uh, students, you know, those that may not necessarily be on the track towards graduation. So they, they volunteer for a six-month military-style training regiment. And in the process of going through that, they learn discipline, self-confidence. Uh, they have the opportunity to sit for a, a GED. And most of them, 90 plus percent, have maintained a very productive lifestyle after they've left that. They've either gone on to high school, trade school, community college, some have joined the military, and some have even gone to higher advanced, uh, more advanced uh, levels of education. Uh, we would like to expand that. Uh, we've got a second campus opening up uh, at the beginning of next year, and we already got our eyesight for a third. Our cyber defense uh, initiatives that we're doing, we have a, a wealth of National Guardsmen that work in some very high-tech industries right here in North Carolina, Research Triangle Park uh, or academia, and they're working together with other state agencies and other private corporations in order to help make sure that their, that their, that their uh, internet or their computer systems are protected against hackers or, or other nefarious cyber attackers uh, around the world, you know, that can get access to our critical infrastructure. Now, if mm -hmm. our viewers want to find out more about the North Carolina National Guard, mm -hmm. where can they go? Well, you can start out first by uh, contacting us at our Joint Forces Headquarters at the North Carolina National Guard. I think it could be Googled from anywhere. Uh, GoGuard.com, uh, for example, is another internet. And we can give you some, uh, some more specific phone numbers uh, to do that. But very easy to find us. Uh, but I think anybody that Googles North Carolina National Guard on the internet will find a wealth of information uh, available to them that, that not only talks about what it takes to be a member, but all the various uh, various job opportunities that are out there and, and skill sets and things. It's, a, it's an exciting uh, and it's an exciting organization that really runs the gambit from well drilling to operating and driving and shooting a, an Abrams tank to flying a helicopter and a lot of things in between. So. Major General Gregory Lusk, we thank you so much for stopping by and talking with us and we also thank you for your service. Thank you for stopping mm -hmm. by. Well, it's a, a great a pleasure to be here, Mitch, and I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate the opportunity to be here with you to commemorate the North Carolina National Guard Heritage Month.